Hey guys, Dr. Becca Warren here. I have a broken foot, so I'm resting it up. But I have interacted with a lot of people from different parts of the world that are part of my thyroid inner circle community that have had their thyroid removed. And a lot of the members within my community, a lot of the women I work with, just had their thyroid removed. And it's happening a lot. So coming from someone that is 18, 19 years post-thyroidectomy, who became a doctor of chiropractic and a functional wellness practitioner to help people avoid the pitfalls that I went through, I want to share with you guys three things to understand if you just had a thyroidectomy, okay? Three things you've got to understand if you just had a thyroidectomy. Number one, gaining weight is not normal. Along with gaining weight, feeling like crap is not normal. There's this flippant attitude about getting your thyroid removed that it's a very simple thing to go through because you can remove this vital organ and then you get on a pill, Synthroid, and you should be good to go. And that is furthest from the truth. But what I keep finding is that women and men, I work with women, over and over again are having all these symptoms and are gaining weight post-thyroidectomy. And sometimes they'll feel better at the beginning and then over time this ends up happening and it's because the way that doctors view your body now without a thyroid is wrong and if you have these things going on like I just did a call with my members let's let me share some of the symptoms you know some of them are getting weight um, feeling tired feeling not like themselves they're they're losing hair they're feeling like more anxious post-thyroidectomy and again, a lot of them felt good at the beginning and now they don't. This isn't a part of the thyroidectomy process is that the medicating, like the medicating, <laughs> the medication process of getting on pills is not being done appropriately. So first of all, that's not normal. You don't have to gain weight. You don't have to feel like that. And that's what I want to try and do is teach you guys how to not have to go through that. Okay. Number two, T3 can be an absolute game changer for those that are healing post-thyroidectomy. Now, again, Synthroid level thyroxine was this gold standard med that this is all you need, right, for your thyroid. But that is not necessarily the case whatsoever, especially with those without a thyroid. First thing to understand is that your thyroid gland makes a majority of T4 and some T3, okay? So your body is intelligent enough. Your, your, your thyroid has this intelligence within it, and it knows what it needs to do. Not only does it make some T3 because you can utilize it quickly, but if there is any type of conversion issue anywhere in your body, your thyroid can step in and increase the production of T3. So even if you have a thyroid and even though you have a conversion issue, your thyroid gland can make up for that. Guess what? You don't have a thyroid. You don't have a this backup system in place that if there's something wrong with your D2 pathway, deiodinized pathway where deiodinized means that it's taking away the iodine and T4 to make it T3, which activates it. If there's a problem in your D2 pathways, in different organ systems and in different areas and you're not converting effectively or efficiently, like in the liver, for instance, then your thyroid is not there to take its place. And one of the biggest issues I find, and this isn't for everyone, I do have people post thyroidectomy that do just fine on T4, but what I find is for a lot of the people that have symptoms post thyroidectomy, it's because they're not converting it. And let me give you an example. We just had someone in my community share that the T4 had to go really, really high out of range to get active T3 within optimal functional ranges. And that's not safe to have to over-medicate 
to get a decent amount of active thyroid hormone. So the doctor rightfully cut back the dose, but guess what happened to her active T3? Now it starts going too low. It's because there's a conversion issue and there's different reasons for why that can happen. But right off the bat, T3, especially in that period of time of healing post-thyroidectomy, that year, two years, three years, you know, that can be really, really important. Really, really important. And then finally, the biggest thing I want you guys to understand is blood work timing. Well, this one's going to have two points. Number one, really important to understand that you don't want to take your thyroid meds right before your test because there can be a spike in your blood work. Um, and then it's going to make it look like you have too much hormone or too little hormone, right? So number one, that timing. But number two, what I have found is that post-thyroidectomy, when you're finding the right dose for you, like what makes you feel better and function well, you know, there's a possibility that you're going to have to tweak it. And not just a possibility, you're more than likely going to have to tweak it. A majority of people have to keep on increasing or decreasing it. And that means you have to get blood work regularly. But what I find is a lot of people get on a med, they might do blood work once, maybe one more, one more time after that, or maybe they might check it again a few months after that. But if you're tweaking and you know, your dosaging with your prescribing doctor, it, it's around every four to five, what, five to six weeks, right? Five to six weeks getting blood work done. And you might have to do that three to four times in a row until you can find the right amount for you. It's not an easy, we're all unique. Our bodies are different. We're bio individuals. So how much I need, it's gonna be different from you, even though we both don't have a thyroid. And how much my coaching client needs versus another, it's all different. And the only way to know is to get to that point where you're enough and you have optimal amounts. If you're watching this and you're like, well, what's optimal amounts? I'm gonna link two things in the notes. Please go get my free Optimal Thyroid Lab ebook. It goes over all the labs that you would need uh, to get tested. You should not You should get tested. And it's at my website, drrebeccawarren.com. I'll also post a link to my podcast episode. It's like the second or third episode where I talk about functional ranges when it comes to thyroid labs. So that's two really great places to start looking. But I hope this was helpful because if you download this information and put it into practice, you can really avoid a lot of the crap that a lot of people go through post-thyroidectomy.